the Warriors. Personally for me, one of the greatest cult movies that has ever been made. I've easily seen this movie around 50 plus times and I've yet still to become bored of it. Today, before I look into the film, I want to give you a little history into the background. The Warriors was released in theatres on the 9th of February 1979 and was directed by the underrated Walter Hill, who has made other great films such as 48 Hours, Shoots of Fire and Crossroads. The Warriors rarely, unlike other cult movies, actually was deemed successful in its first opening weeks and was rolled out in theatres all across America and could have easily made back the movie's production budget. However, the movie's success was quickly spoiled by a tragic incident that took place in Palm Springs. Members of the Blue Coats, an African American gang, took a members of a white gang called The Family. On Monday, February 12th, a 19 year old boy, a member of The Family, was fatefully shot at a drive in. The same night, an 18 year old bled out after being stabbed in a movie theatre 165 miles away in Oxnard. As a result, Paramount gave theatre chains an out, saying that they wouldn't take it to court if the theatres opted not to show the film. The Warriors was based on a 1965 novel of the same name written by Sol Yorick, which in turn was actually an adaptation from the ancient Greek text Anabasis by Xenophon. The text told of Greek mercenaries that were stranded 1,000 miles behind enemy Persian lines, trying to fight their way back home. The Warriors follows Xenophon's narrative rather closely, but Hill wanted to set the movie in a completely different style of the universe. The film begins as Cyrus, a powerful gang leader in New York, calls a meeting of all the city's gangs to work together and overthrow the police. However, Cyrus is assassinated and the blame falls on the Warriors. When Luther claims that he saw the Warriors' war chief Cleon shoot Cyrus, Cleon is then killed by the Riffs and now the Warriors have to fight their way back to Coney Island through gangs and police who want them finished. The Warriors moves along a frantic pace. Michael Beck plays the cool-headed war chief Swan with his only goal of seeking to get the other members back home to Coney, alive and in one piece. James Ramar is unforgettable as the woman chasing hot-headed Ajax, always out to prove his use with his fists, and David Patrick Kelly is perfect as the murderous but ultimately cowardly leader of the rogues. And Deborah Gay Van Valkenberg who pays Mercy, a troublesome slash misunderstood girl who is as tough as she is vulnerable, who ends up becoming the love interest of Swan. What I love so much about the Warriors is its overall simplicity of the plot. It is so stripped back and straightforward, so anyone looking for a complex storyline and characters will be left disappointed. It contains such a mesmerising mix of cartoonish costumes and cheesy street violence that plays out against the backdrop that's pure neon and somewhat portrays a dystopian odyssey. The specific look that was achieved by Walter Hill shooting by night and on location together with his DOP Andrew Laszlo. The two created New York's oil slicked streets becoming a labyrinth lit by pools of reflecting light both scary and strangely beautiful. It also manages to somehow humanise the gang to a surprising extent illustrating the material and emotional poverty that forces them onto the streets in the first place. This is really highlighted when Swan and Mercy are on the train home to Coney. The two are looking dirty, bruised and bloody. Two couples who have had a fun night out on the town wearing suits and dresses come on the train and sit directly opposite Swan and Mercy. When they realise who they are sat opposite to, there is an awkward tension. This makes Mercy become self-conscious about herself, reaching for her face Swan instantly grabs her hand in a way that gives off a certain sense of pride that they don't have to be embarrassed about what they are. Although it isn't much, they have earned what they have and fight for what they believe is right. There is a lot of scenes in the Warriors that I can argue being favourable, be that the baseball furies chase through the park, the subway death stream fight, the intense chase from the Turnbull ACs, but honestly my favourite scene of the Warriors has to be the build up to the final showdown in Coney Island at dawn giving off the feeling to a climax of any western. Walter Hill told David Patrick Kelly to improvise this scene to make the Warriors feel unnerved before the big showdown. So he improvised with some battles that he found and was actually something he stole as Kelly stated that he had seen his neighbour doing this bottle trick to the kids playing outside and now it is a well known line to nearly every known moviegoer. Warriors come out to play when Luther and the rogues are confronted by Swan and the surviving warriors at the beach, he asks them why did he kill Cyrus. 
He challenges him to a fight one on one. Luther backs down and pulls out a gun. With a hidden switchblade, Swan throws the knife, hits Luther in the arm, disarming him, and that's even though Luther had the upper hand, he is no match for Swan. I've seen the similar scene towards the movie Yojimbo, a 1961 samurai film where Yojimbo throws a knife into the corrupt Tarnsfolk hand. The film ends on a high note with justice served to Luther by the Riffs and Swan and Mercy and the surviving warriors walking off into the sunset. But it leaves us wondering how they're going to live their life after the night's events. Is it worth it? Is there nothing else that they can try and be? Or are they just going to live the rest of their life as a gang fighting for survival? Hill was actually interviewed on the movie in 2016, 37 years after the movie's release. Hill stated that I love the fact that people still enjoy something I did 37 years ago. It makes an old man happy. I'm surprised by it. But I love working with my cameraman, Andy Laszlo, and shooting it. And I love working with my cast, who were incredibly trusting of this crazy old effort that was making the movie. They didn't get it, I don't think costume gangs running around New York, but they just went with it. Have you seen The Warriors? What are your thoughts? This is a new channel and I'll be discussing more cool classics weekly. If you have any movies that you would like me to review, please let me know in the comments down below. Thank you.